What is up everyone? Welcome back to another video of Ant Will Plays. Today we're going to be playing um, Choices Across the Void Chapter 5. In Unmarks... Okay, before we get into this, um, I guess in the last chapter we are introduced to a ship that was destroyed or something. I don't know, but I think it was from the war side, because we were supposed to we were supposed to go straight course to a planet that's we're we're in a line where we have to go th to this through a, the space through a safe path through the past the war line, but I don't I don't know if we should interfere or not. Because our boss told us to not interfere with that. But, anyway. Let's just see. An unmarked ship is calling for help. But who or what will you discover inside? I please don't let it be a repeat of Alien. Yeah, get, trust me guys. There's going to be a lot of references to um, to any space movies out there. Please don't let this be a repeat of Alien. Please don't let it be a repeat of Alien. See, the red line is is the is the bad side, which is the war side. You see the yellow line? That's what we're supposed to go to. Matara, that's what we're supposed to go to. Chapter 5, Distress Call. Now playing as Eos, you stand beside your brother and several members of the crew, staring at the wreckage of an of the unmarked ship through the viewport. That ship doesn't have a long, long range, long range weapons. Have any long range weapons? What's a small civilian cruiser doing out here in, on its own? Maybe it got caught in the war zone. Yeah, the war zone. Anthony's eyes widen. He exhales slowly to center himself, then turns to you. Eos, I need you and Zeke to go and check check the ship for any for survivors. Before you can respond, Sol moves between you and Anthony. Captain Alara inter interacted with a Captain Alara interacting with the, with a damaged vessel is highly dangerous. Artemis, Artemis will not approve. Artemis doesn't give orders to the to the marshals. It's their job to investigate external threats, especially if they affect the Atlas. But listen, I'm with the captain on this. It's our job to keep the Atlas and its inhabitants safe. Thank you, Eos. Good luck. You call Ziki over your shoulder. Ziki, come on. Time to prove yourself as a marshal. Here goes everything. I swear. Okay, here's what I'm hoping. One, this better not be a repeat of Alien or Predator. In Alien, the people go to a planet or a ship. They find these al these egg alien eggs. One of the astronauts gets attacked by one of the babies, or the face grabbers, and it impregnates that pilot, and an alien, and a xenomorph baby comes out, and it has a growth spurt, and blah blah blah. I'm hopes, hoping they don't bring something onto the Atlas, because if it does, then we have a big problem. Ugh. Okay, here we go. Arriving at the hangar, you and Zeke hurry toward your martial fighter, martial fighters. Each ship is is already ideally ready for launch. Eos, are you sure I'm ready for this? Absolutely. You're a fantastic pilot. You've been training for years. You got this. 
You're right. I've been preparing for this. Thanks, Eos. That's... that helps. That's what I'm here for. Besides... Besides eye candy. As you open your ship's cockpit, something metallic clatters to the ground at Zeke's feet. <clears throat> Excuse me. We forgot to install these guns to our sh on our ships. He holds out one of his, one of the guns to you. Ooh. And I didn't get the name. All right. We put these in the in these in there until we had time to attach later. Time to attach later. My old one was removed so th so the new one could link up with yours. Isn't isn't it mandatory to put these on both our ships before we go out into the field? Technically, yes. We can only freeze another ship's weapons system if we use the guns and had them in them. This is terrible. I can't ignore protocols when my, when I take take my ship out for the first time. These kind of things do have a tendency of getting put on permanent records. We barely start. We started and I'm already failing. <clears throat> Upgrading your martial fighter ship not only customizes your cockpit, it also offers you bonus scenes and event and advantages later on. Okay, because I have a feeling we're going to need it, and we're going to need those. Don't worry. We'll have these on in no time. Hop, on, hop to it. Yes, boss. In record time, you and Zeke, you and Zeke hook up nitrotrons onto your ships. Now, you ready for your first mission? Whatever it throws at us, you clap Zeke's hand in in a martial hail, interlocking your forearms and pressing your forehead to his. Together, we eradicate the darkness, where it is a, up to us to keep the stars bright. What? Once you've spoken, to, spoken the scarred words of the ancient marshals, you climb into your fire ships. You fly your ships out of the hangar bay and around the side of the atlas. How does it feel to be flying your very own marshal ship? Yuki's voice comes in through your comm system and his image appears on your hollow screen. Even better than I imagined. The damaged ship comes into view. The Atlas already tried communicating with the ship, but no response. Let's give it one more shot. You press the broadcast button to your left. Unidentified vessel, Marshal Alara of the Vanguard speaking. We received your distress signal and are here to offer assistance. Do you copy? As you wait for a response, you notice the ship's defensive systems are flashing in eradicated bursts and seem to be malfunctioning. Eels, my scanners are picking up a life form. We've got to, we've got to help. Please don't let it be some weird alien thing. Ziki starts to fly closer, but as he does, you notice the ship's automated defense systems initiating. Eos, turn, to, turn on your nitrotron now. You watch as the ship's guns pull back in preparation to fire. My nitrogen is not activating. Try designating you know, your other weapon defense systems. The unknown vessel gun emits a red glow as its laser heads towards you. Got it. Activating now. You switch on your nitrotron in unison with Ziki. Whoa. That hurt my eyes. 
A dazzling blue beam emits from the from each gun at the point of crossfire. A spherical status field forms around the damaged ship. Woo, we did it. Their weapon systems is successfully deactivated. I can't believe that worked. Of course it did. Best way to fix your problems is to freeze them. Ziggy Chuckles, Chuckles comes through the comm system. <laughs> That's one way of dealing with them, Eos. Together, you and Ziggy fly back toward, toward the hangar bay with the mysterious ship suspended between you. Once you've gotten the damaged ship inside, inside the hangar, you and Ziggy hop out of your fighters. We've got the ship inside without scratching the atlas. You throw your arm around Ziggy's shoulders in Dairy. You're already making the galaxy safer. Ziggy beams and his cyber lines seem to glow even brighter. Oh no. You, re you release your partner, then climb up onto the unmarked ship. It takes up most of the f most of the bottom level of the hangar bay. Time to see what we've got here. You pry open the door to the cockpit to find a smoking pile of debris sparking loose wires and an apri pilot with shards of metal producing from her skin. Uh Ziki, calm Anthony. You tell me we've we need a medic. What what did the pilot's eyes close as Anthony burst into the hangar bay? I saw everything from the bridge. Is she alive? Is she still alive? To press your fingers to the unconscious Apri's neck and feel a weak pulse as her shimmering aura flickers. She's still breathing, but we're going to need to act fast. I'll get a stretcher from the emergency compartment. You carefully cut the pilot loose from her restraints, then pull her limp body into your arms. Give me a hand, Ziki. I keep forgetting what character am I. I'm Eos right now. Ziki's eyes widen at the sight of her. There's so much blood. He begins to be acting away horrified. Ziggy, take a deep breath. You got this. Ziggy lets out a large, jag breath. You're right. I can do this. Ziggy hurries over and helps you hold the Apri as you climb off the ship. You then lower her onto the stretcher together. I scanned her vitals. They're not good. I'll get her to the med bay and alert them that we're coming. Anthony rushes off, pushing the stretcher ahead of him. Shouldn't we go with him? You put a comforting hand on Ziki's shoulder. It's out of our hands now. He looks down at the blood speckled across the hangar bay floor. The Apri was trapped in there, pleading. While I was worried about myself, I should have gotten her out faster. You can't think like that. You did the best you could. I don't know if I can take this waiting, wondering if everything's going to be okay. There's nothing worse than waiting. It makes you feel helpless. Sounds like you know the feeling. You nod, laying out a puff of air. Well, more than I'd like to. I usually try to do something to take my mind off it or drive myself crazy. As you glance up the, at the ceiling of the hangar bay, you're reminded of something. I saw that there was an activity room on board. I don't know, Eos. You nudge your shoulder with yours. I heard they even have a tribute saber. No way. I haven't played that since we were kids. I bet I could beat you as, as easily as I did back then. I've learned a thing or two since then, Eos.
Nah. Maybe we can play some other time right now. Right now I have to start our report on the pilot. Oh, okay. I think I may head back to, to our quarters to wash up wash up them. You watch as Ziki leaves the hangar bay and notice him shaking wifely the wiping the traces of blood off his hands and onto his pants. Now playing as Anthony, you sprint into the medical bay, pressing the pilot on the stretcher as quickly as you can. We need some help over here. A Romley a Romley rushes over to you, his hands cracking with lightning as he lifts the apri up to in, up into his muscular arms. Romley Is this a robot? Oh. Never mind. We have to stabilize her. Clear off the operating table over there. Got it. You sweep in you sweep as you sweep in assortment of medical items to the ground, he slides the injured pilot onto the table. Is she going to make it? The minute quickly and puts commands into his data screen, and together you watch as orange light encases the apri. The magnetic substance begins to surround the metal shards producing from her skin. She's she's sedated, and the shards are being removed. It will take up a few minutes, but the immediate danger has passed. Now that we have a moment, you must be the new captain. I've heard so much about you. You strain your neck to take in a full height and muscular frame of the medic. That's right. I'm Anthony. I'm Captain Anthony Alara. Jesus Christ, he has muscles. Uh, you make me wish I needed. Uh, I have a capable medic like you on board. Meredith. Meridian. 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 Okay. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have a lot of work to do. Meridian tur turns his back to you, you and picks up a slender surgical instrument. Oh, um, I trust you can find your way out. After all, this is your ship. Uh. Uh. Excuse me. As you exit the room back into the corridor, you knit your eyebrows together in confusion. Do you think Meter do you think Mer Meridian was mocking me, V? I don't think so. Why would anyone mock you? You're fantastic. Before you can respond, Sol rounds the corner with with a determined look on his face. Captain Lara, I need to speak with you. Is something wrong? I saw the day I saw on the day I saw on the data screens that the injured pilot is wearing an unmarked uniform. Yes, but we c we cannot allow an unknown element to remain an on the atlas. She is a threat to the luxurious atmosphere and possibly to the well-being of our passengers. So, I'm the captain here. You need to let me do my job. I'm not about to let someone die because they don't fit into the atmosphere of this ship. I have decided my I've, I've dedicated my life to study different cultures and customs. Only those with something to hide remove any trace of their true identity. You pull yourself to your full height. This isn't your call to make soul. It's mine. You overstep, Captain Alara. As first officer, I will be reporting this to Artemis immediately. Just then, Pax comes bounding the corridor with a goofy grin on her face. Effie, I just saw the pilot sh 
the ship in the hangar on my data screen. It lashes onto your arm excitedly. It's so stellar. I'm dying to get, get a closer look. You turn away from Sol and wave your hand dismissively at your sister. I'm in the middle of something, Pax. Do whatever you want. Ooh, thanks, bro. This is so exciting. Pax skips away as you turn back to Sol, only to find yourself alone in the corridor. Sol? Okay. Just then, the, the door to the medical bay opens again. Our mysterious guest is out of the asteroid belt for now, but it'll be a while before she's able to hold a conversation. Glad to hear she's stable. Thanks, Merid Meridian. I can't keep. I can't remember his name. Meridian. 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 No thanks necessarily. Treating the injured is what I do. You cough and adopt a more professional tone. <clears throat> uh, yes, good work. I overheard you and Sol earlier. You don't have to worry. I'm sure the Apri is too injured to plan a hostile takeover of the Med Bay. Sol was just being overcautious, overly cautious. I don't know if he was in the. I don't know if he was in was in the war. I'd occasionally see unmarked uniforms on patients brought to the hospital. It was never a good sign. A soft yet insist, insistent chime begins to go off inside the medical bay. Meridian sighs. I'd love to talk more, but that's her heart monitor. Giving the way we found her, she's lucky to be alive. I'll need to prepare another treatment to keep her blood pressure low. He starts to head back through the door, then pauses and glances at you. If you're not needed, if you're needed else, if you're not needed else, if you're not needed elsewhere, I wouldn't mind having some company while I work. Um, no. Go back to work, dude. Maybe next time. I don't want to get in your way. Don't worry. I make a habit of not letting anything get in my way. You watch as he heads back into the medical bay, barely hiding a smile flourishing across his lips. Okay. Hmm. The next morning, you stride out onto the bridge and find Sol putting away several culture custom handbooks. Good morning, Sol. Have you spoken to Artemis yet? He clears his throat. <coughs> Captain Laura, I... Meridian races into the room, his eyes brighten. The pilot's awake! You let out a jaggered breath. It's time to find out who she is. Alright, let's see who she is, and it's gonna happen next week. Okay. Why didn't they just... Why didn't they just... Tell us her name when. Why did they just tell us her name and end it right there? Uh, I don't know. Initiate status report. Allegiance neutral, at risk in condition, crew high morale, passengers cheerful. Also. Ah. <sighs> Well, um, what should I say? Well, this is a good book, and I'm glad I, and I'm glad I picked this book. Sorry if I, um, sorry if this was, like, fast or something, but, yeah, I don't do those kind of special scenes, if you know what I mean. I'm not a homophobe, but I'm just saying... Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Make sure you guys give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe if you're new to my channel. Share this with your friends. Comment below what you think of the video. And if you want to get notified of all the videos I put up on my channel, just hit the notification button next to the subscribe button. And I will see you all in the next video.